this video, we are going to go ahead and get our beginning balances entered into our QuickBooks file. So you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need your bank statements and credit card statements. Uh, you, you're going to need the balance as of your starting date. So if you're starting January 1st, you want the balance of your bank, your credit cards as of 1231. Okay, you're also going to need to know any uncleared checks or deposits, your open accounts receivable, your open accounts payable, uh, mid-year income and expenses, any non-posting sales orders or purchase orders or estimates. And then we'll get a little bit into sales tax payable and payroll taxes payable if we need to. All right, so essentially what we're doing is we're taking our chart of accounts, all these zero balances, we're going to true them up to what they really should be. So the way to do this is you go ahead into company, down to make general journal entries. Okay. And down here, it gives you a list of all your most recent journal entries. You can go ahead and hide that if you want to. It takes up a lot of space and this is gonna be a big journal entry. So first with the checking account, you're going to want to debit the account for the balance at the end of the year, how much was in your checking account at year end. So we'll go ahead and say $12,000 and 85 cents. All right, and in the memo, opening balance equity. Okay, and then the next line, we're going to say petty cash, we had $120, and notice how it copies my memo down for me, that's a preference again. My savings, we had $8,000, okay? So there's my beginning cash balance, it's pretty easy. So now we're going to move down, you can just continue on down the list. Accounts receivable, we're not going to enter on this journal entry. You want to enter the detail for accounts receivable. Uh, meaning each customer's invoice because that's the way so that you can receive their payments when they actually pay. The other thing is too, and we'll get into this in a little while, um, is that you can't post to an accounts receivable and an accounts payable account on the same journal entry. You can only do one or the other, so we do those separately. Inventory asset also, that's something that we're not going to post to from here because we want to put in the actual quantities and values so that they get the beginning inventory balances correct, okay? We go on, keep going down. Let's say we have some uh, prepaid insurance of $1,200 and keep going. Retained receivable, we're... we're not in that business anymore, so we're not going to have retainers receivable. Fixed assets, you want to make sure to keep your fixed assets in here. Okay, there's my accumulated depreciation. I have some furniture and equipment. Let's say about 14, uh, 12. Okay, and we have some let's say vehicles, we have a vehicle, all right, okay, so going down, do we have any security deposits, okay, keep going down, now we get to accounts payable, accounts payable is the same as having a accounts receivable account, we want to put the detail in there so that when we actually write the checks to our vendors, we can have the detailed information, okay? Credit cards, so you have your credit card statement there, you wanna put in the balance. Notice also, we just did all our assets up here. Oops, accumulated depreciation should be a credit. Excuse me for missing that before. Make sure that depreciation is a credit, it's a contra account. Okay, so up here we have all of the assets. Um, down to security deposits. Now we're getting into liabilities. So liabilities have an, a credit balance to make them positive. So when we add in the credit card balance here, um, you want to be able to have the balance as a put it under the credit column. So we're going to say 455.78. 
in credit cards. All right, keep going down. We have the, uh, if you have any liabilities, payroll liabilities, you don't want to enter here if you're running payroll through QuickBooks. You want to make sure and adjust your payroll liabilities in the Employee Center there. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave that out. Sales tax payable. Whoop. Sales tax payable. Uh, also something that you want to adjust outside of QuickBooks, I mean outside of a journal entry, you want to adjust it up under the sales tax payable um, adjusting window up here, which we'll go into in a little bit. And we don't have any of that. And we're going to say we have a long-term loan out for $50,000. Okay. Then keep on going down. Do we have any capital stock? No. Retained earnings is there. Do we have accumulated equity with our shareholder? Uh, let's go ahead and say that they have accumulated equity of, you know, uh, $2,000. All right. And then we get down into the income and expenses. Now, you're only going to enter income and expenses if you're making this entry. If you're making this entry, uh, any other time except for the beginning of the year. All right. So if this entry is happening on January 15th, you're going to have to have 15 days worth of income and expenses on your, this journal entry, right? So you're going to have to put in here your income that you've had in, in the first 15 days of the year, and then also your expenses that you've had for the first 15 days of the year. Okay. Now, if we're talking about 15 days of the year, I would say it's better to just recreate those 15 days. But if you're talking about trying to enter these beginning balances in month nine of the year, you know, maybe you don't want to go back in detail, enter all those entries for the first nine months. Uh, so you can do some summary entries. All right. And if it's an income, it should be on the credit column. An expense should be in the debit column to keep them positive. All right, but we're in this fit, in this demo, we're doing this as of 12:31. Uh, so we're doing it as of the any balances of last year. We're starting in a new year fresh, so we're not going to have any of those income and expenses added. Okay. So now I've added all of my accounts that I can in the journal entry, and where do I put this remaining balance? Okay, QuickBooks calculates for me the balance that's left. And so I need to figure out where to put that. So I'm going to put it to opening balance equity. Okay. Opening balance equity is basically a clearing account that we stick everything to. And then once we get everything entered in, we roll that out into retained earnings. All right. Save and close. Okay. All those little fun pop-ups. So now you can see here I have some balances. I've got $20,000 in my bank. I have some prepaid expenses here, fixed assets of $36,000 net, credit card balance, long-term liability balance. Okay, all this information goes through there. So what's the next step? Next, we're going to go ahead and enter in uncleared checks and deposits. So the way you want to do that is you're going to go into your check register and pretty much the only uncleared deposits and checks would probably be in checking, but you could have them in other, in you know, multiple accounts, but we're just going to focus on checking for now. So the bank balance was 12000 This is from my actual bank statement, $12,000.85. However, I had two checks and one deposit that weren't cleared yet. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to put them in to my register here, but I want to put them in as the actual date that I wrote the checks. So 10, 15, 2010, check number 512, and the amount is for $550. And then I'm going to put this to opening balance equity as well. Okay. And record that transaction. It's giving me a warning that it's more than 90 days in the past. Again, watch the preferences. You can turn that off or on. And we're going to say another check as of November 18th for 
$850 and the account was to opening balance equity. All right. You can put in here names if you want to of your vendors that you wrote the checks out to. So I wrote it out to Sally Joe. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick ad vendor there. And I wrote this one out to Sally Joe too. So that way you can keep track of the vendors, uh, uh, who these checks were written out to. But what we really want to have is we really want to show that, yes, the bank said that we had $12,000, but it didn't take into account these two outstanding checks. So truthfully, what our balance was at year end, our check, our checking account register balance is $10,685.85, okay? So we don't have any outstanding deposits, but if you did have any deposits, you would enter them in here as well. Now we have to enter in our outstanding accounts receivable. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create a new customer real quick. All right, we'll say the new customer is Terry's House of Fun. Okay, and we have another new customer that is Joe's Shack here. And we're going to go with one more with the place. Okay, so three customers. These are the three customers that have open accounts receivable at the end of the year. So what you're going to want to do is you, you want to go ahead and create an invoice for those customers with the create date the correct date on them. So that way when you run your AR aging summary report, all that information will um, come out correctly because it'll know this was an invoice from back in 2010 and it is past due. All right, so put in the right invoice number that you have. And we're going to skip all that information for now and go down to what's important down here. So you're going to create a new item. All right, so when you click the down arrow, I'm going to say add new. And it's going to be an other charge. And it's going to be called opening balance. Okay, so this item we only use in the beginning when we're setting up our file. If you want to, you can check this box. I usually do so that it's a double sided. So when we enter our accounts payable, we can use opening balance. And when we enter our, our accounts receivable, we can use opening balance. So these are the only things that you need to fill in. Item name, expense account is opening balance, equity, income account is opening balance equity. Okay. And we put in the opening balance. $400. All right. Um, let's go ahead and add a quick sales tax item. Okay. So we have some sales tax to be added up there. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and say save a new. So here was my opening balance for the place. Now, if I had multiple accounts receivables, um, so multiple invoices that were outstanding for the place, I would want to put that those in as well. All these pop-ups will start coming up with for you in the beginning when you start using QuickBooks, so you can get rid of them pretty quickly there. So we're going to go ahead and enter the second one for the place. Opening balance of 250. All right. Say save and close or save and new. All right, then let's look at we want Joe's Shack of Fun. And he just has one invoice. All right, and it's $870 and it's not taxable. Save and new. All right. And then we're going to say to Terry's House of Fun, we're going to have uh, opening balance equity and the price each is going to be $1,200 so due to us and save and close. Okay. So we have our beginning opening balance equity here. Now when we go in and we run our company financial or balance sheet, stand, balance sheet standard, you should be able to run this report as of 1231, right? That's when we're doing this as of. And you have your accounts receivable balance right there. 
So that should tie out to all of the invoices that you have created. Okay? All of your open invoices at your end. Then you want to do the same thing on the vendor side. So we're going to go ahead and enter a bill. We're just going to have Sally Jo as a bill. Sally Jo, it's going to be an opening balance equity again. Um, you can do it on the expense side, but I prefer to do it on the item side. Use that opening balance item that we made. Uh, the cost is going to be, let's say we owe her $580. Okay. And the reference number was... Uh, let's see what was dated November 19th and the reference number was 11 19 2010 okay so that's the only outstanding uh, payable that we have so if you go down again look and notice now we have accounts payable for $580 outstanding out there all right at this time too you'll want to enter in any open purchase orders any Anytime you have a open sales order, any estimates that you have open still, you want to go ahead and enter those in the system. Those aren't going to affect your balance sheet. All right. If you need to do a adjustment on your sales tax, you can go ahead and do that up here. And we talk about that in our sales tax video. And then if you need to go in, you can go in and, and adjust your payroll taxes as well. Okay. So that is how you get beginning balances into QuickBooks.